with that, it's my pleasure to introduce to you um, for our next presenters, we have Matya Rabida and Vincent Zimmer. Um, Mr. Rabida is a software developer from Intel's uh, networking division, and Mr. Zimmer is senior principal engineer and firmware engineer at Intel. And they're going to speak today on improving UEFI network stack performance. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending this talk. So I'm going to do the introduction on this topic and then pass off to my colleague, Matchy. So this, this talk is going to cover a few points, give the motivation for why we're doing this work, where the work started, some of the limitations, and then um, some great results that are going to be shared. So if you're not a runner, you don't like to go fast after this talk, Matt is going to teach uh, you to go fast with networking. So what's the motivation? Why are we giving this talk? Why aren't we having a UEFI network sub-team meeting? Well, this talk is really representative of work that's in the spirit of what um, and Dong in his keynote said, code first. Really what we want to do is expose um, an industry challenge and then one potential work uh, approach to address that challenge. And it's early, meaning the solution isn't fully um, productized and ready to drop into platforms, but there's working code that'll exemplify some of the points. And so sort of the business motivation though was um, the legacy BIOS. So as Intel and the industry have been encouraging people to move from legacy to UEFI, one point that's brought and brought up is a disparity in networking performance, Pixie Boot. Um, the legacy Pixie Boot was often, in some use cases, faster than UEFI. Um, the other complaints and concerns about UEFI networking, and then some other industry trends like Linux Boot, where to do deployment at scale on bare metal, people are using a Linux kernel. So this talk is really, again, motivated by concerns on moving people to EFI off um, Pixie, our legacy Pixie, and concerns brought up by the ecosystem. And with that, I'm going to pass to Machi. He's going to give the starting point and the details. OK, thanks. Uh, so in order to tackle the problem of the network stack performance, since we are in a, in a pre-OS environment where networking is mostly network booting related, I wanted to uh, tackle the problem from just checking how good or bad it is especially in terms of Pixie Boot, which is the closest thing I'm doing regularly at Intel. So uh, the test suite I had is a client server connected to, with a 10 gig, uh, 10 gig Ethernet uh, connection with two 10 gig adapters, Intel ones. I have a server feeding the server 2012, feeding a Windows Server 2012 image. And uh, on the client side for Metal Metal, I'm just using the regular uh, non-Intel non platform just to see how it, how it behaves. And uh, for the virtualized environment when I'm using OVMF, Linux, it's Fedora 29. And uh, I'm feeding a, uh, I'm having a VM with QMU and OVMF. And I'm using the VFIO PCI driver to pass through the physical function to it. Uh, so, my findings uh, for the, where the times represent the uh, time of downloading a boot Vim image, which is basically the same for both legacy and UFI. And uh, for the legacy, we can see that the image, well, the image is two, 220 megabytes large, like, so, or some, some kind of this. And for uh, the legacy Pixie, on the non-Intel UFI with CSM, I got uh, 2.1 seconds, which is roughly 790, 800 megabits per second. Uh, on the bare metal UFI, on the same platform, just switching the UFI uh, boot, I got nine seconds, which is very slow in comparison. Uh, I've done also the CBIOS with QMU, just to check how, how it behaves in the legacy environment. I got 300. Uh, megabits, roughly. Well, it's um, the numbers are the average of a running the, the same scenario a couple of times. Uh, 
uh, for the virtualized environments with OVMF. I've done the release version of official one from EDK 2018. So I've built an OVMF in debug version and release version. And here are the times we are mm, with debug. We have 200 megabits, which is uh, very close to the non-OEM platform, well, non-Intel platform uh, performance. And with release, I've got 550 megabits, which is better, but still we're not catching the legacy. Uh, so uh, how much can I improve with uh, modifying the UFI or just checking uh, how fast is the network stack on the lowest of the levels to see whether I have any improvement possibility uh, on the on the UFI. And I've done a simple application to try to check on the SNP, which is Simple Networking Protocol, and MNP, Managed Network, Managed Network Protocol, to see how fast it would receive packets. It's a very, very small, just looping and trying to receive a flood of uh, full MTU packets at the 10 gig rate. Uh, obviously on the BSP core, so it's the, the one running the whole UFI. And when I've got it, I could receive whole 10 gig lane on SNP, which is fine, we can work with it, try to try to improve it's a good, good start basis. If MNP receive, when I've unloaded each and every driver connected to it, so I was only the, the one listener on the network stack, I had 4.5 gigabits with only ARP and my receiver, I had four. So obviously adding more listeners to, to MNP uh, modified or had a performance drawback on, uh, on uh, MNP. And from the previous site on the uh, OVMF release, I had 550, so it's like on the top of the stack, utilizing already the whole UDP section. So from observations, just a quick note, if anyone has some problems with network stack being slow on the regular OEM platform, don't build the debug version of it because it significantly, significantly affects the network stack performance. Uh, adding extra receivers on an MNP, of course, it's going to affect it. Uh, mm, MNP also, well, the, the single core environment forces us to process the packet fully be before we try to pull another one, so it's obvious. And the, in between legacy and UFI, UFI has uh, significantly, significantly more background events to process, and it's more complex because it addresses uh, various different use cases. Uh, legacy is just optimized to do one simple thing, I mean the legacy PXT1, and it does it faster. But we still have an improvement potential between the MNP, so layer two and PXT base code layer five or six even, mm, between four gigs and 0.5 gig. So uh, if anyone wants to try to tackle it on the current design of the network stack, feel free to do it. Um, what can be done? So uh, since legacy and UFI PXT are being fed the same image from the same TFTP server, I'm assuming that it's not a WDS uh, problem at this point. So it's probably our stack. We can try to optimize, but since UFI, uh, w since legacy is uh, running uh, only, the on, only the receive with a minimal background imprint footprint, uh, I don't think we can do much more than them. We could try, but I don't know whether it's possible on a single core with our with our uh, current design. Mm, okay, but it's, but I still wanted to play a bit because well, let's let's try to increase the sky a bit. So since we have uh, an MP services protocol in UFI, which allows us to run a couple of uh, well, uh, allow us to run a sim simple function or a set of functions on different cores. It's being used in PI, but it's still available in Dixie to run functions. Uh, I thought that I could utilize those functions, those uh, other cores simply idling in Dixie to offload the networking on those. Uh, what I would achieve is, well, PSP would probably focus more on 
the, the still on the background events, but still most of the networking, polling and, and processing would be done on other cores. Uh, we could probably perform scale the performance if we had abo about more more interfaces, network interfaces on the on the uh, on the system. And I wanted to provide, let's say, a couple of servers, not only the ARP solution but something else. We could probably scale it up better. From main concerns is that UFI is not threat safe from from let's say a couple of more core standpoint, it ob obviously disables the interrupts during the TPL switches, uh, so it doesn't interrupt itself in a, in a critical sections, but it's not meant to be like multi-core environment. Uh, from the current network stack complexity, I probably wouldn't be able to, as a one, as a single person, rework the whole current stack to work with multiple cores because it's meant to be run on single court, it's based on events, reworking all of this just to make it work. I'd need probably more people to do it. And so the, sec the third concern would be, I'll probably break specification here in many different ways, so par parental advisory, if you're having some hard problems, maybe don't, <laughs> don't watch it. So I wanted to have an alternate TCP IP stack because due to the uh, due to the backward compatibility, I cannot just drop each and every network driver and say that we're not going to use it anymore. So I th knew I had to propose an alternate thing to it. I want to offload the network from the BSP, provide the socket API like in regular OSs. Uh, I wanted to use a no regular open source and thread safe. Uh, TCP IP implementation because that would be something I could work with as a single person. I'll still leave the SNP layer for me just to be conformant in, on this kind of layer. And uh, I'll take the DHCP API from the DHCP server, the DHCP driver inside this driver as well because it's needed for my specific use case, I was focusing on pixie, uh, pixie booting most of the time. So I've chosen to use a lightweight IP implementation because uh, it's, it's uh, let's say, a somewhat, uh, not, not an industry startup, but well-established well open source uh, solution for uh, microsystems. Uh, it uses a single thread for all packet processing, so it's kind of, uh, well, it has a thread function, it's made to be thread safe, I just need to spawn a thread, point it to that function, it just works. It's thread safe on API level, as the, as the wiki says on, on their page, so feel free to discover. It exposes OS like socket layer already, so I'd need to probably wrap it up in some kind of protocol and it should just work. And it's al almost autonomous, it uh, needs very minimal uh, OS or environment support for it to work. It, al it also manages its own memory. So if I just put it a, a block of inside of data segment, it just manages it yours myself, and I wouldn't need to call boot services for uh, for memory allocation. So since I have the possibility to use a couple of cores, so I've managed to. Uh, divide the responsibilities between those cores. I would have a BSP still running the, all the UFI, but it would uh, op operate uh, the application level, which is basically Pixie base code, MTFTP, and, and whatever, HTTP boot probably. Everything that would interface the socket layer would be run on BSP. However, the, I would have a separate core running lightweight IP, and a separate core or more cores to interface other adapters, pull them, and then feed the lightweight IP uh, core with incoming packets. From the AP application processor standpoint, I would have a, a SNP being called in loop by pull, uh, pull APs, and once the packet is received by SNP, it's just gonna be fed via the messaging mechanism upwards to lightweight IP. And lightweight IP will just 
keep on checking their message queue. If the message is get, gets received, it just processes it through to Socket API. For uh, from BSP standpoint, BSP would just check the, its own socket whether and it has any packets or not. It's very quick operation, quick check. For transmit path, the BSP would send a message to Light ATP via the messaging mechanism for uh, sending a packet. And then uh, Light, then it would have to wait until the uh, lightweight IP core executes the, the, the transmission. And for the transmission, the lightweight AP will call directly the SNP uh, and simply return since SNP executes a blocking transmit operation on Andy. I have a summary of changes done to, to the EDK. Uh, so the network MP TCP IP Dixie is my own driver. I had to have an abstraction layer for MP services protocol to spawn, let's say, threads, but I wouldn't like to care about which core is exactly running what, so I just, I need to uh, execute a function on an AP, just do it. Uh, also, uh, I needed a better mechanism to identify which core is currently running my code, so it, whether it's BSP or AP. Uh, the current solution in MP service protocol, while being called frequently, is not fast enough. It's, it does CPU ID, which, uh, being, which, which is being called twice. It's not, it's not uh, a feasible solution for me. So there is one quirk done. Uh, that's why it, the, this, this my solution only supports x64 currently, and x86 as well, I think. Uh, from others, libraries, I needed threading, uh, threading safe structures, so I have a library for that. So those are new things. For modified, I had to modify SNP because a SN, uh, simple network protocol uh, utilizes a common buffer for all the commands that are being run on a single SNP uh, node. Uh, for transmit, receive, com basically communication with Andy, I had to separate at least uh, a buffer for transmission because transmit would be called by another thread instead of BSP. For MTFTP and Pixie base code, I had to retrofit them to utilize the socket protocol instead of the regular UDP or TCP. But it might be possible to uh, have uh, the socket layer wrapped in the UFI protocol so I wouldn't break this kind of uh, well spec in this, in this area. And for the OVMF library, I needed a debug uh, capability to print uh, print stuff to, let's say, debug port, but in a manner that uh, course wouldn't, uh, you know, overwrite itself. So I needed some kind of synchronizing mechanism there. Uh, so after after doing all those changes to the to the network stack, I'm still revolving around Pixie booting. I've tried to run the same scenario with the new network stack. Uh, on the same setup, I've just switched the OVMF image just to check again how fast I can go with boot vim download. And what I've achieved is uh, 1.1 uh, gigabit on it. So it's getting faster than legacy in twice the UFI. Mm, from summary, so Doing multi-threaded uh, networking is proven doable on a UFI. I'm, no, I'm not saying it, it's not, but probably some specification breaking is involved. It's faster than legacy in the current solution. It has to be an alternat alternative rather than substitute due to, uh, of course, uh, uh, backward compatibility. Performance definitely could be better, but I don't know what's uh, the performance of the fully fledged lightweight IP solution on, on an OS or somewhere else, uh, but it's kind of good enough. I know, of course, Linux OS can go 350k uh, packets per second with full MTU on a UDP, on a single core, uh, but it has received test scaling, interrupts, and so on. So, and it's also optimized for multi-core environment. I'm just, you know, having a couple of cores doing the polling and just one doing the processing. And I've dumped all the core uh, of the code I've done for for this on the EDK2 staging for you to, to, to check for, for yourself. Thanks.
Yeah, um, thanks a lot for uh, presenting this. I think this has been long overdue, right? I think many, many years ago, <laughs> uh, I remember I talked to Intel about this, right? So why, are we, why aren't we consider more of the multi-threading, you know, with all these threads or cores available in the system? Why aren't we doing this more in the in the firmware space? I mean, the Linux boot guys are doing this, right? So why why aren't we doing this? Yeah, I think it's a good question. Um, I think definitely need a compelling use case, and this seems like a use case that argues for it. And if you look at the tree that's posted, the locks that have been added are very very small. So the the impact to the core is is very light, and I think the reason we haven't done it is looking for a use case. So this was a use case that showed MP actually helped. Um, years ago, we did an experiment with interrupts, and we saw latency help, but not throughput. And that wasn't a figure of merit we really heard in the market. But as our networking division has learned, this is a, this is a business challenge, um, the disparity in performance. And so if there are other use cases, maybe that would argue for more MP. That's good feedback. Do you have uh, any data point on whether just turning on the the MP, the multi-threading, mm -hmm. uh, helped versus just the the, the stack itself? Well, right. So if you ran if you ran this new stack that you have in single threading, what's the comparison to the old network stack? Do you mean mm, comparison for the old stack versus the new stack, or o old stack versus the new stack without the multi-threading? Did, did you consider that experiment just to see the factor of multi-threading versus just the code? No, uh, I haven't. I haven't uh, done the lightweight IP on a BSP core. If that's the question. Yes. No, I haven't done it. But since uh, every since we have a background events and other stuff, I didn't think that it would be really feasible to do it. And especially since lightweight IP is uh, working. Like it has a multi-thread support uh, built in, so I could just uh, use the thread function and allow the MP just to run it. It was so simple. Probably I would need to retrofit a bit more in terms of uh, using it in, on the BSP itself. So uh, is Pixie uh, booting the only use case you looked at? Are would it help with the Redfish client, which also uses the similar TCP IP stack to kind of send and receive? Would it improve if we use multi-threading multi there as well? What I'm doing at work mostly is UFI anti drivers and legacy Pixie solutions, and the most common scenario for us is Pixie boot. That's why I focused on the most known scenario for me. But then uh, retrofitting other stuff uh, like let's say Redfish or HTTP boot or iSCSI boot using <laughs> sorry <laughs> using uh, a socket protocol on those if if you can then it's probably gonna work okay. Do you have any idea at all how the upper bound in throughput correlates with the granularity of the timer tick? Oh, do you mean the, whether I've done the profiling on top of the socket protocol instead of using it in the Pixie base code? Or? Well, I would guess that even though your throughput is limited, that your CPU is not at 100% during that time, right? So basically, we're wasting cycles sleeping while we could be doing actual work. Mm -hmm. do, do you have any numbers, any idea how much time we're throwing away like that? Because I think it probably correlated with the granularity where we... So I guess the question is, yeah, the one performance optimization we have today is the EFI timer tick frequency. Yeah. So have we done a study to go from like 10 milliseconds to one to... I don't think we swept the uh, timer no, tick I've, for some no, of these studies. But I've done a simple check with Mike yesterday because I had this, the, the whole setup. I could just swap the OVMF and changing the, the, the timer tick didn't affect uh, the performance that much. I think it went from three seconds to maybe 2.7, but nothing, nothing special. Okay. One of the 
real-world scenarios that we encounter that really stresses the network stack is a very large layer two network with lots of uh, broadcast traffic flying about from 10,000 machines or so. Have you done any profiling with this to see how a large amount of background ARP traffic might um, influence it and no, whether I there's a significant improvement there? No, I haven't done the, 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 the test with uh, contaminated, let's say, the network running in the background. I've done it only in a very small, small limited environment just to see how much can I improve there because uh, in a contaminated environment both stacks would get an impact on the performance probably due to the broadcasting. So it's just a matter of percentage. I um, just have a comment for mainly um, same concept, multi-core support for the trusted firmware as well. I think there's benefit there. I see use cases for those as well, necessary for you folks, but for the ARM, um, especially Martino, so, um, looking into that, that's something that would be useful as well. Feel free to use the code. Okay, any more questions? So your presentation talked about optimizing when there's multiple NICs involved. So with this measurement, was this just with a single NIC? Only or? a single one. Okay. And uh, is there a reason why there's no uh, new uh, bare metal UEFI driver performance measurement with the new approach? Bare metal? I would need to modify the BIOS to, to get, uh, let's say, uh, the performance done on the, on the specific platform. I, since I didn't have it, I was running on the, basically on the reference implementation, which is OVMF for me. I've just done it here because that's the, let's say, most simple way for me, just to swap the BIOS image again and do the testing. If I have the BIOS source, I'd go and do it. Okay. Would you expect the BIOS modification to be pretty straightforward or, or, or well, substantial? You know, adopting this, it should be straightforward once you know which kind of code, you, which, which parts of code you have to put inside the, the, the platform. But since we are modifying the core, I have to rebuild the BIOS instead of just replacing the, the, the UFI drivers. But it should be possible. But I, I believe that for the cases where I'm doing. Uh, uh, bare metal versus UFI and OVMF thing. Uh, I'm getting like maybe 90, 95% of performance on the virtual machine instead of bare metal. So, so it's, the footprint is very minimal there, especially with the VFIO pass through. So the VM handles the, the, the PF directly. And the nice thing is since the code's on staging and you use the existing UNDI, you could take the code off staging, pour it into your platform, Try different undies. I, I think there's an, all the collaterals out there now on GitHub to try some what ifs, even if you're interested. Yeah, this is just a minor clarification. Um, earlier on, you were showing the list of things that you modified. Yep. Um, when I think of core, I think of like Dixie core. And um, so you also just said that you'd been modifying the core. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yep, it's not written here. But the core had to be modified because, let's say, if I have an AP uh, trying to transmit something via SNP or Andy, SNP does TPL callbacks, uh, uh, TPL erasing and restore on a TPL callback. I don't need any TPL modifications on the on on the other APs, right? Because they're not running any inter interrupts or TPL is not valid there. So I had to identify whether I'm running on a BS, uh, I'm running the code whether on the BSP or AP, just to do the uh, the raise or restore TPL flow just for the BSP and uh, just return with a TPL application of some sort on the APs. So there has to be this kind of modification. Uh, also, when when we say that uh, um, the core isn't exactly thread safe, it is when you have a single core and it just prevents itself uh, from interrupting itself. So there are cores in place, the, the, the locks. I've added uh, the multi-entry locks for, uh, I've just extended them so that they, they work properly for uh, the environment with multiple cores. So if we want to allocate the memory from AP, it should just work.
Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Juan.